Hi, I'm James Bruce, you're watching MakeUseOf.com and today we're taking a look at the Puppy Cube. Now, despite the name, it isn't in fact an innovative pet feeding solution. Instead, it's an all-in-one projector that turns any table or surface into an interactive touchscreen. Yes, it really is that cool. Having completed crowdfunding at the end of last year, it should soon be listed on Amazon for the cool price tag of around $1,000. Let's take a closer look and see if this puppy isn't just for Christmas. Sorry, that was terrible. All right, let's get some numbers out of the way first. With 300 ANSI lumens, it's capable of projecting up to a 100 inch display, though you will need a very dark room to do that. Its main use case is to sit on top of a surface and project down onto it, creating an interactive touchscreen. It has auto keystone and auto focus features, which make it incredibly easy to use and set up anywhere. The output is 1280 by 720p. It features a 10 point multi-touch system via a camera and inside there's an M-Star 6A938 quad core processor paired with four gigabytes of RAM and a somewhat paltry 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. Now external HDMI input is possible. Just pull off the back cover here and you'll find an HDMI port under there as well as the charging port and a USB accessory port. However, bear in mind that when used as a standard wall projector or with external HDMI input, you will of course lose the interactive touchscreen abilities. You can't touch the wall, it's only when it's on the table. A custom Android UI is provided, however, underneath it appears to be running Android 6.0, which is a little bit antiquated at this point. Although an OS upgrade has been promised, we all know how those promises tend to end up. You'll also find dual 5 watt speakers, a microphone, a camera on top for video chat in projector mode, and overall it's a very simplistic design. It's a box 5.2 by 3.4 by 8.1 inches, and it weighs about 3.5 pounds or 1.6 kilograms. It either sits upright like this for use as a table projector, where it projects from here downwards, or you can lie it on its back where this then projects onto a wall. There's an internal 5,000 milliamp hour battery providing around 2.5 hours of usage. There's also a handy remote control included which charges over a micro USB port. This is for use in projector mode. So my first impressions were fantastic. I set it up on the kitchen floor and it automatically adjusts the size and the focus. It, it does everything for you and immediately starts recognizing your touch gestures. Everything just works out of the box. I was able to type straight away, there was no config needed, the accuracy is fantastic. When I set it up on my kitchen work surface, which is a sort of satin wood, it was less impressive. Obviously anything outside of a white or grey, the projection colour is going to be a bit weird. The touch also became a little bit less responsive, possibly due to reflections from sunlight. That said, even on a fairly overcast day, it was pretty much invisible when I set it up right next to the window. I had to move it over to the other side of the kitchen just to make use of it. In wall projection mode, things are less impressive. Even on a pretty gloomy, overcast British day with a blind drawn, I still couldn't get much of a visible image out of it. That's to be expected though, at 300 lumens, it's about one tenth of your average cinema projector, so you really can't use this for projecting to a wall in any sort of daylight. That said, the ultra short throw projection factor is very convenient. I found it incredible how big of an image I could get in such a tight space. My house is half underground, so the corridor downstairs is always in darkness and it's a really tight fit. And yet I managed to get a perfectly visible 50 to 60 inch screen there, though admittedly I could barely sit down. The point is I'm generally really impressed with the hardware side of things. While you probably wouldn't want to use it for an actual home cinema, if you did for some reason want to cram your child into the cupboard under the stairs, they could at least still watch CBeebies on a 60 inch projected screen. Unfortunately, where it all falls tragically and rapidly downwards is on the software side of things. Now, four games are included out of the box, which seem to at least have been curated to show off the capabilities of the device. Some of them have local multiplayer on a single screen with multi-touch, which was very cool, really demonstrates how well that can work. Unfortunately, they're not full versions of the game, so some of them did in fact have things like play a video in order to continue playing this game or to get some more coins, which to be honest, I don't like in games that are aimed towards kids. 
Still, they do serve as a good introduction. As well as that, you have Firefox, Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, and a music player. While the Chinese version of this device also has voice control, the English version doesn't. Now, unfortunately, even after installing more software, you still can't change the icon layout on your home screen. So if you don't particularly want to use Netflix or Twitter, well then, you're stuck with them anyway, sorry. And after that, you're basically on your own. There is no official app store included, and you can't even use Google Play. Instead, you have a third-party app store called Up to Down, which is just bad. First thing I did was to try and install Google Play and Play Services from the Up to Down store. They are listed there, but when I downloaded them, I was just bombarded by the constant, sorry, Google Play services has stopped error. I reached out to Puppy Support Team and they told me Google Play and Play services is just not compatible with the device and that they would add a note to their Amazon page to clarify that. Now this is pretty tragic, of course. It means you can't actually have YouTube and a whole host of other apps that rely on Play services. Now, while I did manage to get YouTube for Android TV installed and it seemed to initially work, unfortunately, none of the videos would actually play and it just silently failed. There's also another third party app store called SlideMe that comes pre installed, which I thought looked a bit more positive. However, even after registering, it appears the app store is sort of dead. Nothing would actually download and the app descriptions were completely broken. Now, I gotta be honest, I really thought we were past this level of sheer incompetency when it comes to Android, but apparently not. I tried a number of my favorite apps that I tend to test Android devices with, and they were either completely buggy, didn't run at all, or just didn't install. BBC iPlayer sort of worked. You could use it in touchscreen mode. However, if you tried to project onto a wall, you weren't actually able to select and play anything. I think that's a limitation of this remote control. In other projectors I've tried, they have a pointer mode, so you can still get a touch, a mouse pointer, on the screen. This one just has basic up and down and select, which unfortunately didn't work. I also tried Plex, which on the other hand worked perfectly in projector mode with the remote control. However, in tabletop mode, it didn't work because it kept being automatically switched into TV mode and then detecting a touch screen, it said, please switch to mobile mode. And as soon as you switch to mobile mode, it switched itself back into Android TV mode. I think it has something to do with the way the device forces landscape onto you. I'm not entirely sure, but suffice to say, very little actually worked like it should. Now, after a bit of fiddling around, Antutu eventually ran and it gave the device a rather meagre 88,000, faster than 35% of Android devices out there. So not particularly powerful, but you know, not the, not the worst either. I'm also not particularly a fan of Firefox, so I tried to download Chrome from that up to down marketplace. It did download, however, when I tried to open the package, it said the package was corrupted. I tried a couple of times, same result. Other than that, I'm afraid I just couldn't run anything useful on the device. It was far too buggy and I just couldn't get things installed. And even the web browsing experience was pretty frustrating. Now these might be teething problems. After all, the device is only just shipping and I really hope that they issue some updates soon to address those problems. However, they did tell me that there's a new version of the device coming later in the year. So if I'm honest, I suspect their efforts will be spent on that instead of this. As is the case with a lot of Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaigns, their first model ends up being really just a test product. I hope that's not what's happened here, but maybe it is. Either way, at the moment, the Puppy Cube is a little bit unusable. And that's a real shame because the hardware is actually really nice, if a little bit underpowered. Overall then, yeah, I'm really impressed with the hardware, especially as a tabletop interactive touch service. It all feels very sci-fi and the touch controls genuinely work. As a cinema projector, eh, there are better devices you can buy for your money. But if you do need to project a large image in a very short space, and it's going to be in pitch blackness or a very dark, then this is still very impressive for what it can output with such a short throw distance. It is, however, embarrassingly let down by the software and it encompasses everything that's wrong with the Android ecosystem. A custom UI, an outdated core OS, incompatible libraries, software that just doesn't run or install, third-party app stores filled with God knows what malware. The software is just atrocious on this device. In terms of price, it was originally reported to have an RRP of around $1,500, 
when it was sold on Indiegogo. However, as mentioned, we were told that the final street price on Amazon would be around $1,000, making the Indiegogo price of $800 much less of a discount than was otherwise advertised. Now, apart from being false marketing during the Indiegogo campaign, if true, $1,000 is still pretty hard to swallow, especially considering how buggy the software is. That said, if you have a bit of killer software that you know is going to work on this device and really fulfill your needs, then by all means go for it. The hardware is pretty incredible. The idea that you can use this as a massive touchscreen on your kitchen work surface without worrying about grubby hands is really quite cool. But sadly, for that price, I just expect a UI and some software that's been much better developed than what we have here. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this review helped you to decide whether to purchase the Puppy Cube Projector interactive touchscreen surface thing or whether to pass on this one for now. If it did help, hit like and consider subscribing. We do two reviews a week as well as technology tips, tricks and tutorials. And if it didn't help or if you just completely disagree with me, then hit me up in the comments and let's, let's talk about it. Although bear in mind when this video was published, of course, by the time you're watching this, they may in fact have fixed the software problems by releasing an update. Until next time, thanks for watching. All right, if you are still watching, you probably know that we're going to be giving away our test device, this Puppy Cube, to one lucky winner. Just head on over to the link in the description, scroll down to the bottom of the review, and there you should find a competition widget. Pop your details in there and you'll be entered. However, for some bonus entries, use the video code not just for Christmas, one word, and you'll get some bonus entries in the competition. Competition closes in about three weeks and winners will be notified by email. Good luck and until next time.